Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be covering Renew Power, India's largest renewable energy company that is going public via SPAC merger with RMG Acquisition Corporation, ticker symbol RMGB, with the deal being valued at just shy of 8 billion US dollars and is expected to close in Q2 2021. Chamath Palihapitiya was heavily involved in the $855 million pipe investment, along with some big name investors such as BlackRock, BNP Paribas' Clean Energy Division. Goldman Sachs is also a large investor as well, owning 48% of the company since its inception in 2011. What's interesting about this announcement, especially given Chamath was heavily involved and gave a very strong thesis for investing, the stock didn't take off as would be expected. It rose around 10% from the original deal valuation, therefore presenting us with an opportunity to get in at the same price as the institutional or inside players. I think the lack of excitement around recent announcements is because of the current environment and market sell-off. It's true a lot of the SPACs won't work out as expected, but some will be real winners. Just like when a company IPOs, you need to do your due diligence and check that the people on board on the deal are doing it for the right reasons. So a bit about Renew Power. So they were founded in 2011. They are India's leading renewable energy power producer by capacity that is, and is the 12th largest global renewable power producer by generation capacity. Renew develops, builds and owns and operates utility scale wind and solar energy products for commercial and industrial consumers. They have a portfolio of more than 100 operational wind and solar projects spread across India. Renew also has expertise in areas such as energy storage and won two long-term contracts recently to provide supplies of green power in the future. They also recently acquired a company called Climate Connect, which gives them exposure and ownership of the digital services area of this business, with Climate Connect being a leading player in AI-enabled grid management. Renew has a strong record of growth in relation to capacity and winning new bids, which is essentially the bedrock of producing revenues in the renewable energy business, as the more capacity you have, the larger your total output will be. As for its market, well, not only is India set to be one of the most fastest growing economies in the world over the next decade, but renewable energy demand is set to skyrocket, with India itself setting renewable energy targets of 175 gigawatts in 2022, meaning 43 gigawatts of capacity will need to be awarded within 2021 to any businesses that are able to produce. As Renew are the largest player in India, it is likely that they will be a big beneficiary of such awards. And to give you an idea, their current capacity is only 5.4 gigawatts. So an extra 43 gigawatts being awarded, even if they get a small portion of that, will lift their current capacity by a lot. India have also set longer term targets up to 2030, which would bring total capacity to 450 gigawatts. So it's fair to say Renew has some forceful tailwinds behind it in the coming decade. It's also expected that renewables will dominate the power sector over the next decade with over 300 billion in investments expected to pour in. Now, a lot of people will see this as a big positive. However, it does prick my ears up slightly as such investments or such high investments and with the margin profile of the industry, it will no doubt attract competition. The only good defense we have to that is its barriers to entry are quite high and it's a regulated industry and requires significant capital to start up. So not only does the industry outlook seem positive, but Renew has a real positive and visible growth outlook for the next three years for itself with an already committed capacity pipeline of 4.5 gigawatts, taking them to 9.9 .9 gigawatts of operating capacity in 2023, which is almost a double in three years. Just to make sure you understand, these commitments are contractual and will therefore almost certainly be acted upon. And as mentioned earlier, operating capacity is the platform for revenue or sales in this business. Speaking of revenue, they're expected to grow from 699 million in 2021 to 1.96 billion in 2025. As you can see, almost 75% of 2025 expected revenue is already committed projects or bids that Renew has in its pipeline. As for 2023 expected revenue, well, almost all of the revenue is from the committed pipeline. 
One concern I have is the leverage that comes with this business. They're not unique in this sense, but it's a capital intensive business for obvious reasons, especially when you own a part of the entire value chain like Renew does. But as we can see, we have six times net debt to EBITDA levels, which is usually higher than I would accept. Usually I don't like to go above three or three and a half. Renew has primarily had working capital funded through debt issuance and the master total debt of 4.8 billion. Post-merger, the company will have around 1.3 billion in cash on hand, which is gonna be used for reducing the leverage and to fund any attractive near-term growth opportunities. But as there is such a visible pipeline, which will likely take up the majority of Renew's capacity in the next three years, I think it would be prudent if they used it more to pay down debt rather than source new near-term attractive opportunities, which I guarantee there will be quite a lot of them given the market is set to expand. So we know a bit about the business now. We're going to review Chamath's investment thesis, look at the current valuation and see if we can make sense of it, and then hopefully decide if it's a good investment for us. So in summary, Chamath is bullish about the Indian renewables market stating a lot of what we've already covered, but such as India will become the third largest energy consumer in the world by 2030. Electricity generation is set to double over the decade as well. He also points out renewables are the main beneficiary of all of this and are set to receive over $300 billion in investments over the next decade. Over this period, the share of solar and wind as a percentage of total power generation is expected to reach 28%, from just 9.5% currently. He points out regulatory framework and legislation is going to result in significant tailwinds for Renew over the next five to 10 years, with a switch to renewable energy being the core focus for India. In the qualitative part, which gets a bit more company specific, Chamath points out how they are the leader in a growing market and have already committed capacity that will grow the business over the next few years. Their asset mix is split almost 50-50 with wind and solar. They're regionally diversified with a portfolio that spreads across different types of vendors, reducing dependency and pricing risk. Something we see a lot of in Chamath's investment is end-to-end -end vertically integrated businesses with an ownership of the entire value chain, which in this case drives cost efficiencies and helps renew to produce some of the best margins in the industry. They have a great track record of disciplined bidding, achieving a 70% win rate in capacity auctions, which when we keep in mind the upcoming 43 gigawatts that have to be awarded in the next year, it seems very positive. They're also a company with various ESG initiatives that focus on improving the world around them. So there is a moral compass within this company. For the quantitative part, we're going to move over to my rough valuation, but just quickly, it seems Chamath is very pleased about their long-term contract commitments with fixed tariffs and the five-year return and EBITDA growth being 30% and 31%, which is visible and you could almost say reliable given the pipeline that they have in place. 86% EBITDA margins, which is always very attractive, but remember does attract competition in my opinion at least. Chamath thinks there is a good margin of safety with the current multiples given the growth so on that note, let's check out the current valuations. So with the current price at $11 per share, shares outstanding of 437 million, we get an equity value pro forma for Renew Power at 4.8 billion. We've got to add back the debt and then subtract the cash that they have on hand and we get an enterprise value of 8.2 billion for the company. Remember Chamath and the institutional investors got in at 7.8, so we're not far off, which means for the forward 2021 EV to sales, that's 11 times, and for EV2 EBITDA, it's 14 times, close to that of Chamath at 13.6 times. It looks attractive for a company growing earnings at 30%, I must say. You know, 14 times means a peg ratio would be much less than one, which is a good indicator of value. I think the reason the attractive valuation is there is because of the debt leverage that's involved uh, with this company. It's something that concerns a lot of investors, including myself, but some industries are just more prone to debt to finance operations. One thing I do like about this deal is that they are already very profitable with 80% plus margin. So it's not a case of this company can never be profitable, but more so to do with can it operate effectively and continue to dominate the renewables market in India. So as covered, we've got 
Revenue growing at 30% over the five-year period, getting up to $1.9 billion in 2025, with an EBITDA margin of 86%, close to what they can achieve now. Remember, these projections seem more realistic given the visible pipeline or committed capacity that is already in place, and we've covered that. If you want to pause the video at any point to look at the numbers and the valuations down here, please do. But I'm going to move over to the valuation scenarios that I have over here. And I've got three valuation scenarios down and given the assumption that they can achieve the projections that they've set. So the first one, which is a base case, they grow as expected at 30% over the five year period, 31% earnings. The EBITDA multiple or the terminal value remains at 15 times EBITDA, similar to the forward multiple that we have at the moment. Debt and cash remain the same, meaning we get an equity value of 21 billion for the company in 2025, equaling an annual rate of return of 35%, which is not bad at all. As for the second scenario, well, this is them growing as expected again as before, but the multiple expands to account for the growth that they've achieved and the future growth potential as well. So we've gone with a 20 times EBITDA multiple, which, which would be cheap given the growth rate. Uh, debt and cash remains the same, giving us an equity value of 30 billion in 2025, equaling a return of 44% annually. And then lastly, the most bullish scenario, the one that we've got here, they grow as expected. The multiple gets more in line with the growth rate. So this time we've got a 25 times EBITDA multiple. They also managed to reduce debt at 50% over time with the 5.6 billion in earnings or EBITDA that they're going to achieve over that period as well. And this gives us an equity value of 41 billion in, in 2025, equaling a return of 53% annually. And in all honesty, I wouldn't say this scenario is out of question, far from it. I think this is a scenario where we're just relying on the EBITDA multiple to get a little bit more steep, which it could do if they can continue to grow or if they can actually start to grow at 30% for the next five years, given the tailwinds. And then they just reduce some of that debt, which is obviously the reason why they're selling at a little bit of a discount at the moment. And in terms of fair value for the stock RMGB today, well, based off of these scenarios, the stock is well undervalued. As you can see, we've got $11 as the current stock price and pro forma, that would be $11 as well. As these valuations are indicating to us, we've got a distribution of values ranging from $22 per share or $9.6 billion all the way up to $42 per share or $18 billion for the company today, that is, based off a 15% discount rate, which is quite a big gap. And it makes me wonder, what am, I, what am I missing here? But there are a lot of risks involved or at least unknowns with this company. For example, they do list 46 of them in their presentation. And although they're generic and some very unlikely, I would suggest reading through them yourself and spotting anything that you would be concerned with. And that's about it for this one. Just wanted to do a quick breakdown of Chamath's latest investment announcement and see if it makes a good opportunity. Going by the numbers, it definitely does. But you have to assess the risk for yourself and see if you are comfortable I'll be looking into this one a little bit more and will likely do a post following up on what I like about Renew Power and what I don't like. So keep an eye out for that in the community page. I will likely post in the next week or so. Thanks everyone for watching. Really appreciate if you can leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you in the next one. Good luck with all of your investments.